Hey, one rental at a time community. This one is for you. It is Jason Pritchard coming from Fresno, California. And today I am very lucky to have uh, sp two special guests, Dustin and Jonathan from Convoy Home Loans. How are you guys doing? We're good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. Thanks for uh, for coming on and uh, and putting this out there for uh, for Mike's community. Um, let's get started and let's just jump right into it. Um, talk to me a little bit. You guys are in the mortgage industry. You guys are in the brunt of a lot of the pain. I think a lot of people are feeling here right now and, and you and especially the clients. Talk to us about what your current client base is looking for when it comes to deals and opportunities. Yeah, I mean, our client base, a lot of them are experienced investors or new investors, right? So for more experienced investors, they kind of already have their buy box. Um, we're talking about the idea that I actually got from them that I spoke to you about on the last one with, you know, building in extra equity is stuff that we kind of ping pong back with the experienced investors on. But those clients are looking at 20% discount properties, right? That's their baseline. If they can't get it at 20%, um, below what the market price is, they're not going to buy it. So um, that's kind of what we've been working on uh, for our more experienced clients, especially when right now value add is the most, you know, I think advantageous for a lot of clients that want to build as much equity as possible. So they'll buy these properties on a 20%, 30% discount um, on a bridge loan, which is a shorter term loan, finance rehab, um, get all that budgeted in there. And then do value add to the property, make it all nice, rent it out, have a new ARV on there after repair value, and then do a cash out refinance from that ARV and then just recycle the process again. So that's been our, the most popular thing for experienced investors. Now for new investors, um, a lot of them have just been looking for turnkey properties. And that's kind of the way that mm -hmm. I've advised everyone go for is more turnkey because it takes a little bit of experience to be able to fix a property up. Because every, the number one mistake that I've seen from new investors trying to jump right into the fix and flip and rehab type deal is they always under budget, they always underestimate the timeline of everything, how long things will take, and they underestimate you know how much equity they'll actually receive at the end. They're very op 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 optimistic. optimistic. They're very yeah. optimistic about yeah. everything. So um, a lot of clients that you know are new, they're I advise, hey, go into a turnkey property, single family, duplex, triplex, quadplex, if you really want to jump in there and really just focus on getting the base cash flow correct, right? Getting, you know, the extra 25% over market rents or 125% or, um, debt coverage ratio uh, to make sure you're getting that over the actual payment to make sure that you're actually going to be getting something from that property other than you having to constantly put money into that money pit, because the more money you have to put into an investment property, as you know, is a negative against your net cash flow. And that only hurts you, right? It might help you on taxes, but it really hurts you on your, your monthly basis. So that's kind of the two separate buckets that I've seen for clients and what we've been seeing a lot happen between the two investor sides. Yeah, I love that. And I think uh, the, the big nugget for me, for the new investors is fixing and flipping right now can be a very, very slippery slope. And you hit it on the head, Jonathan, every new investor that I meet underestimates their repairs and they overestimate what they think their house is going to sell for. And especially now that can get you out of whack, especially if you're running tight margins. So I think that there is something to be said about turnkey because at least it gets you in the game. It may not be some grand slam or home run deal, but if you're really doing this for the long haul, singles and base hits are okay right now. We just need to get on, we need to get on base and we need to get some positive momentum moving. And what I've always found is that positive momentum, even from those singles will eventually get us closer to some of those bigger deals that we all want to do. So great, great advice. Exactly. That's why the Dodgers can never, you know, when we, we can't hit singles, right? That's what happens <laughs> all the it. time. Only home runs, so, dude. That's it. Oh yeah. But singles yeah. win games, right? Realistically. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, everyone should take that to heart. Good deal. All right. Cool deal. So let's go on to the second question. Um, what do you think about the importance of interest rates? Has it slowed down your guys' brokerage business at all? And how has it impacted it? Yeah, I mean, the importance of interest rates are very important for those people that are uh, generating income by posting, let's say, the the more clickbait type videos online, right? Yeah. Um, it's very important to your first time home buyer or people that are trying to upgrade, you know, their current primary residence and, you know, increase the amount of people they have in their family. I do feel bad for people in those situations because it's very hard to want to tell your wife or your spouse or your partner or husband, et cetera, that we should, 
let's say double our mortgage payment to get an extra 300 square feet, right? Yeah. So that is very important on the owner occupied conventional side of, you know, our industry. Um, knock on wood, as I was telling you offline, like as many people know, Convoy, I'd say 90, 95% of our business is investor financing. And in terms of interest rates, like when I always speak with clients about, no, the rate's going to be 7.75 or 8.25. I always tell them, look, it's just another number you're putting in your system that'll tell you if this property makes sense to keep, to buy, to refi, you know, to hold, et cetera, right? We're not as in, in terms of as the investor community um, going to care as much. Now, there might be not as many properties that you can cash flow with the rate at seven or eight, but if you find something, that's either on a 20% discount that you're now getting that can now cash flow at 8%. You are hitting a single or a double to allude to what you guys spoke about earlier, right? So we're just as busy in terms of the amount of clients that we have in our pipeline right now as we were two years ago when rates were at 3%. The biggest thing that a lot of people may not know is that we're struggling on the fact that it takes a lot more work now to get a loan from beginning to the end because of the, let's say, changes that the lender and the investor might make with the requirements on the DSCR, the assets, the reserves, you know, the market that it's in, rural or not, et cetera. So our closing time has probably increased, I'm going to guess, maybe 20 30% than what it was a mm -hmm. year or two years ago. But in terms of the importance of rates, yes, it's important, but it doesn't mean for investors that we should be scared or any reason to be scared to not keep looking for great deals. I think that's really good. And I I also prefer to work with investors. We sell a lot of our deals to other investors and there's not the emotion that you get with the owner occupant buyers, right? It's like you said, you, you said it perfectly, Dustin. It's just another number on the spreadsheet. And as long that's as all your numbers on the spreadsheet work out and the math at the end works, it doesn't really matter, right? And you know that if you can make it pencil with an interest rate that's got an eight in front of it, at some point down the road, we all feel confident. We don't know when, but we feel confident it's going to come down. It's going to look even better when you're able to refinance it. So um, yeah, that's interesting. It's interesting. The sentiment that we're feeling on the side where we're buying and selling is that the appetite for investors has not dissipated at all. Um, and, um, it's good to hear that on the, uh, on the mortgage side too, because right now all we're hearing is doom and gloom. So good news is good. Uh, let's yep. move to number three. What hurdles do you guys see new investors struggling with the most? Yeah. Um, I kind of covered a little bit of the fix and flip side, um, for new investors. Uh, the biggest struggle that I see them come up with is being afraid to jump in now. Right. And that's the, I think it's like we talked about in the last video, it's all in the head. And at the end of the day, um, investors are like, well, if I wait a little bit until rates get a little better, right, then I can get, you know, cash flowing at where I need it to be. I need everything to be perfect. But the important part about, you know, and Warren Buffett says it best is you, you have to be in the game, right? It's about time in the game, not timing the market, right? So if you get in and let's say, like we spoke about rates are in the eights or whatever it is, right? And it cash flows are where you need it to be. Later on, when you refi into a lower rate, right? Then your payments are even lower and your cash flow is even better, right? So what they don't see is they don't see beyond that first initial loan that they have to get in order to enter into the market, right? Yep. They see that higher price and they're like, oh crap, I can't buy it. I can't afford it. This is going to cause this and this and this problem. But we all know like success takes a little bit of risk, right? And if you do the work in order to get a good deal at a discount or, you know, bring enough liquidity in to put down towards the property, then you're going to you're going to win at the end of the day, right? As long as you hold on to it, as long as your your game is long term, you are going to win. So it's time in the market that people kind of have a hard time overcoming if they're especially if they're new because they're not used to pumping 20 30 50 100 grand into one deal where they're like okay well I can't touch that money anymore but there's nothing more uh advantageous for ROI than real estate as we've seen in the last you know 10 years we thought bitcoin and all these other things were going to be the bit next big thing and what happened as soon as the market turned, all of that started coming down, right? But real estate has only gone up, even in the hard times. So I think importantly for newer investors, like, hey, just just bite the bullet and get in the game. 
get that turnkey property at a discount. Make sure cash flows at 125%, meaning it's 25% over the payment at least to make sure that you're getting something from the property to enter into the market. And then later on, may it, whether it be a year, two years, three years, five years down the line, when rates come down a little bit, price are going to shoot back up. And you're going to be able to get the full advantage of the equity that people were able to get the last three years from their prices going up because demand is still there, like you've yeah. alluded to. Um, and demand will only go up as rates come down, because right now you're only competing against the people that have money, realistically, right? Everyone else that doesn't have extra money to put down towards a property is not trying to buy a property. They're trying to survive it later on. Let's say, you know, rates come down a little bit. Now you're competing with a pool of people that have just enough money to offer what you're offering at. So now they want to go at a higher price. So you're kind of bidding against yourself later down the line. So newer investors now's the time because later on you're going to wish you put money into the market at 2020s in the 2020s when it's like 2050 you know so like just like we say like i i mess around with my friends and i'm like we're like what were we doing in second grade instead of buying real estate and you know we should have bought some real estate back in <laughs> the early 2000s that's what we should have done instead of fooling around in in uh in a classroom but that's kind of the idea yeah and i've been chomping at the bit to, to insert something here and so i'll go back to when i first started and People were telling me, I, I, I'm i going on year 10, I guess now, nine or 10. And people were telling me in 2014 that it was not a good time to buy real estate because I had missed the all the opportunity from 2009, 10, 11, 12. I remember specifically, I had flipped maybe seven or eight houses and I was in a title company and I was walking past somebody and my escrow officer was walking me out and he introduced me and he was like some big time broker out here. And she was like, oh, this is Jason. You know, he's a new investor. He's flipping. And he told me fixing and flipping is dead. That's what he told me in 2014. That's verbatim the quote that he gave me. And if I had listened to that guy, I would not have done anything, guys. And so 2014 was bad. When COVID hit, everything was supposed to end. There's always going to be something. Like literally, there will always be a reason or an excuse. And when you get into the space that we're in and you really embrace the idea of being an investor and doing some of the stuff that we're doing, you have to understand that we're contrarian thinkers. We don't think and act like all the masses do. And so when it comes time to make that decision, we're going to be making decisions and taking action that is the opposite of what 99% of most people are doing out there. And so that has to become the new normal, right? And we were talking about that earlier about the mindset. Your mindset has to shift in the way that you evaluate risk, in the way that you evaluate your relationship with money and all of these other things that have been conditioned to into us for a very long time. So that's really good. Yeah, struggling to time the market instead of getting time in the market is a really good one. I like that yeah, one. Yeah, I love that. Yep. All right, uh, last one. Um, how do you guys advise uh, your clients to get started when they're investing? Is it private money? Is it their own cash? Do they go the conventional route, non-QM? What's the best source of funding and financing for them to, to get off the ground and, and, and start uh, start investing? So th that's, um, I, I always, and we always tell all of our loan officers and, and me and John always preach it, that we have to take each client with a, a more holistic approach and looking at their overall situation because a lot of times clients do come to us and they're telling us that they want to go conventional or I want to go hard money but then you speak with them 15 20 minutes later and we realize that actually your best option might be doing a DSCR now cashing out then doing your bridge or hard money then doing a conventional loan so there's I would say I don't advise one particular product because mm -hmm. that wouldn't be me being the best you know loan officer I could be if I only pushed one product what's nice is that we do do all of it from you know your conventional to non-QM, DSCR, fix and flip, ground up construction, you know, everything, right? So it's always going to be a conversation if you have it with us, where we're going to actually give you our advice on what we think is best based on your situation, your assets, your goals, short-term or long-term. Yeah, that's good. I think Mac matching the financing with whatever the exit strategy or the deal or the project is, right? And so not, I think we were talking about having the ability to be fluid and learning how to adapt. And I think just having one tool in your tool belt is never going to be the right approach. We have to have different ones. And you guys are a great resource for uh, for investors that need the funding side of their tool belt filled up. So I appreciate you guys. Lots of really good information on this. If anybody from the One Rental at a Time community has questions about 
securing some of this funding? What's the best way to get in contact with you? Go to convoyhomeloans.com and let us know you came from Moran. Nice. Thank you very yeah. much, guys. We'll talk soon. See you in Vegas. Thanks, Thanks Jason. You.